Well, thanks for agreeing to talk to me. Sure, always. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm doing basically is, uh, so this book that you uh, were nice enough to be a part of is going to come out October 10th. Cool. And it's coming out during a very strange time. And, uh, you know, um, obviously this year turned out to be quite a interesting year so far. And uh, the timing of the book coming out where three quarters of the people I talk to are self-employed uh, musicians or, or artists or whatever, um, makes it kind of interesting. And um, I just kind of knew I wasn't gonna go on that imaginary uh, book tour that I had dreamed up, where uh, like, tons of people were gonna be flocking out to see me uh, speak about whatever, you know? I mean, uh, I don't really know if that was actually gonna happen, but, you could have told that would have that would have been cool. You could have like gone to record stores or whatever, or stores, record stores. Would have been great. <laughs> it would have been great. <laughs> Two thousand twenty yeah. was supposed to be a great year for me too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you know, because of all that, I figured I should take matters into my own hands and just try to do stuff that's going to make people maybe hopefully pay attention to the book a little right. bit more. Yeah, and I thought, hey, I, I could talk to some of the people I interviewed and and uh, see how they're doing this year, and that's primarily what's happened. So, yeah. uh, so I guess what I'm wondering is, uh, start things off is, uh, how have you been uh, doing during this bizarre, challenging time? And uh, did you have anything planned out? for this year as far as like back in January and stuff that did you have a whole year of stuff lined up? Oh, no, I, I, yeah, I had a whole year of, of, of touring. I mean, I was going to do Sabadell and Dinosaur Jr. finished a record like in the very beginning of the year. It was supposed to be, I think it would be coming out like now basically or a little, actually it would have come out like a, probably two months ago. Yeah. You know, it was going to be the year that I like, um, you know, I mean, I've had some challenges just because I had changed my life, you know, eight years ago or whatever. <laughs> and I'd move, you know, I, uh, you know, I have a, anyway, I just, this, this was going to be the year that I was going to sort of climb back on top of my finances and do, you know, I was just going to tour through the year and power through and be able to, you know, uh, so I think initially, initially when everything kind of went down and I was like, oh, I can't do any of that. I, I definitely had my sort of reactionary, like, I'm doomed. <laughs> like, this is the worst <laughs> thing ever. Oh my God. You know, and, uh, sure. But, um, but then I don't know. It's kind of, but then I think the trajectory of my life anyway is like, it's definitely like, it's going to, it either, at some point in my life, I was going to have to totally take control of, of my own thing. You know, yeah. I, I have to be like, look, I'm going to have to find my own fans. I'm going to have to like, I'm going to have to, you know, I just, because at this point, I mean, I've always put my, I've always made most of my money from bands that I play in. Right. But sure. I, I did know that if I really wanted to like, you know, live the life that I want to lead, you know, like ultimately, like I'm going to have to take more and more control of what I do and put myself out there. You've done that a, to a large degree. I think, you know, you've used like Facebook and things and, you know, you've yeah. really, you've, you've, you've really reached out to establish like to make your, to make your, I mean, I don't, I would never call it a hobby, but to make your, your passion into your, 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 your work. And, you know, and, and certainly with you, like not being able to go on tour with the Melvins and stuff like that has probably put you in, in like, is an interesting challenge. And that's, it's very similar to what I'm going through. But, but basically what it's done for me is like expedite what I've got to do anyway, which is like, yeah, I got to, I got to round up, I got to circle my, my little wagons and I got to like, I got to figure out who likes my stuff and I got to figure out, you know, all of these things that I, I think, and in a way, I've I've just come to realize that this whole thing, as fucked up as it is, is actually a blessing, you know, like in disguise. But and then I also, 
the also being able to spend so much time at home with my kids i can't even i just didn't even you you i mean you understand this so a lot of people don't get it and you don't really want to complain about it too much but when you have ch when you had children or when you have children and especially in the early stages of of what's going on it felt like crazy i've never felt so claustrophobic yeah. So like, so like on the edge of my, my sanity that I've been ever, I've never felt so trapped in my life. <laughs> but, but it's kind of amazing because it, it, as you, as I've learned to cope with that and developed all of these like coping mechanisms for that. And then, and then learn to also, you know, just communicate with my partner about, how we're going to make this work without driving i mean like with each other and how to balance this stuff and how to like to equally share this burden because my wife is also she's also a you know she had started doing these circuits of uh, you know craft fairs you know and i think you know where she was selling her knitwear and we had just started doing that that's so that's that, that, that's my part that's my part yeah, that's the exactly. situation with my partner too i mean she does yeah. exactly same sort of creative, creative, artistic sort of thing too. Yep. Yeah. So we, and we had we had done a lot of work in the last two years to, to get her up and off the ground or get her career going that way, and that's all that's gone too. <laughs> but anyway, I I think, but I, I have to, it's just weird. I don't know. At some point, the fever kind of broke, and I was like, uh, you know, I'm just gonna like. I'm going to figure this out and I'm going to be, you know, I'm going to be the best dad I can. And I'm going to like, and when yeah. I'm with my kids, I'm going to give them a hundred percent. And when I'm not with my kids, I'm going to give as much as I can to, to, to what I do. And I'm not going to sit here and complain. Like I can't do anything. I mean, I'm like, cause it's just like, it does, it's like, there's no, you can say you can't do something and, it, and then the, the situation is impossible, but it doesn't make it. It doesn't, do doesn't change it. anything. I mean, like, yeah, I mean, like if, if nothing, if, if, anything, if nothing else, it strengthens your resolve to, uh, you know, nobody's really going to take care of you. You have to take, you have to figure out a way to reinvent yourself or what you do to the best of your ability. And, and it sounds like you're doing that. And I've, you know, I've seen that you do a lot of, uh, you know, concerts online and stuff, and people are into it. And you know, I was like, "Oh yeah, Lou gets it." You know, this is what. You, you know, the future is really uncertain, so it's like you have to kind of reinvent yourself and just keep plugging away. You know, I mean. Yeah, there's just. I I don't know what it. I I just felt like I've. I feel like I've grown up like so much in the last five months that I. I and not, I thought I was pretty grown up anyway, you know, because I mean, I, you know, I have a house and I've got kids and a car and stuff. And yeah, you know, I'm, kind of, I'm kind of a middle class music. I'm sort of a rare kind of middle class musician, you know, I'm kind of similar to what Dale does, you know, very kind of a, I mean, I mean, Dale is somebody that when I met, when we met, like we realized like, was like, well, we are really, we really live parallel lives. It was very funny. Um, Cause there's not a lot of even people that we know as musicians who live the same kind of life where you're, where you've got kids and, you know, and you, yeah. you know, in a large degree, you're doing a, you're, 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 you know, you're a main member of these bands, but you're also sort of a supporting person as well. You're not exactly the person who's pulling the trigger on everything. And you're not always, you know, it's like, anyway, it, it was just, but I guess I just, I just realized it was like, I, I, I know like all of my complaining about, I would just, I just know how it would always kind of default to this, like, defeatist thing like well that's going to be bad or this is going to and now it just it just seems so it's like why did why waste like i feel i feel kind of uh so humbled by the idea that like i've spent i've wasted so much of my life or my time complaining about like what i can't do or what i can't like i mean it's just i just it it just shocks me when i look at it and think i'm I'm like, you know, I, I don't have time for that anymore. Yeah, exactly. Well, the other thing, I, I think I might have said this to somebody recently, but there's something really nauseating about self-promoting yourself, you know? Oh, um, it's, it's really hard. <laughs> yeah, it is. But also there's, but, well, you know, at the same time, it, it's like there's this point of time where you just kind of go, well, there's no point in fake modesty. You know, you've obviously done something 
that people, you know, it's, it's not going to be millions of people, but enough people, you know, you've done music and played in bands and enough people really like what you do and the people that like what you do really like what they do and they're going to support you. And, you know, there's, there's no time to be, uh, you know, sheepish about sticking your face out there and just trying to. Yeah. I'm learning a lot. That's, that's, that's evolving for me. Cause I'm, I'm really like, cause I get really, I get very self-conscious about, you know, posting things and ask, I mean, I get, I get really, I mean, I, but then it's, it's just a good, I mean, you're a really good, actually, you're a really good role model for that. Cause I really, I do really, I really like the way that you've kind of put yourself out there. And I like the way that you've just embraced it. You've just kind of thrown yourself into it and been like, this is me. This is what I'm doing. And it's very, yeah. like, there's something very honest about it. And it's, I, I find it inspiring. I have to say. Oh, well, thanks. <laughs> you know, you know, thank you for that. Cause I do, I well, do really, it does. I, I, I think about you when I, when I am like in these sort of moments of like, Geez, I don't know. I, I posted already last, last, you know, last week. Maybe I, is it too much? If and I'm like, you know what? Brian wouldn't worry about that. He's he's just doing his stuff, and he's like slinging his prints, and he's like, and you know, just do it, you know. And it's just, it's just, just do it. Start conversations. Do it. Do it. Just like, you know, be be be. I mean, it's. I don't know. It's it's just a. It's kind of a, it's a fa It's it's been. It's a struggle for me to do to do that. Because I really, I, I really worry about, I mean, I know that people, it's like, you know, the, the fact is like people think that, you know, I'm far more successful than I am. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> well, that's always how it is. It's like the perception of like, you know, it, it's especially the perception of it from people that maybe don't do creative things. They think, well, if I saw this guy on television or if I see this guy being filmed by somebody or if I hear yeah. about it online then there's this idea that you've made a million dollars or or whatever yeah. <laughs> and, and, and all that means is like you know you're just a working creative person and you're just trying to keep it going i mean like i'm too old to do anything else other than this you know no that's it that's that's totally it it's like it's like you're yeah. i mean it, it's pretty funny like in that initial these in it, the initial sort of shock of what's happened you know you're like Wow, I literally have nothing. <laughs> I mean, like I've known that before, and I've tormented myself. I've, you know, I've woken up at four o'clock in the morning for most of my adult life, going, "Oh my God, I don't have anything else." But, but you know, you always have. But in, but when the you know when the daylight rolls around, you still got a tour scheduled, and you still got this stuff, and you still have these things that are these little carrots that are dangled in front of you to keep you going for the next few months, and then to sort of face it, just like. There's no more carrots, but <laughs> there's no yeah. more carrots. You're the one. Yeah. You, you're so now, you know, gotta, so now you're trying to grow carrots. You're trying you're to trying grow, grow it. Or, you, you've got to grow it. I think, and that's it's funny because it's it 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 really goes hand in hand with so many so many of the other parts of this of this this phenomenon where you where you, where you um. You know, you, you you know you're cooking more, and you're you know you're growing shit in your garden, and you're, you know, um, I don't know. It's funny. It's just, you're trying to be you're trying to be present. You're trying like uh, I said, the whole pandemic thing. Also, it's like it's literally been one day at a time, like through everything. I can't even get. I can't even. I've been asking a few people I've talked to. Uh, oh, do you have any future plans? And then I realized what a stupid question that was. Like everything is so up in the air and open that future plans would be staying alive and hopefully getting back to what I was doing before the pandemic shut everything down. Well, I don't know, you know, you know, what's, what's funny. I mean, about it with me, I guess is just being, just being subtracted from touring life. Um, is like pretty amazing. <laughs> it's kind of incredible. Cause I, I've, I've never been, I've never been home this long in my entire adult life ever I mean, I've just, so and and in a way like I was just thinking about it because like I have all these I have all these really wonderful these routines that I've developed over the last five months you know like just like shit about like when I get up and what I eat and what I do and um sure and they like those things are like so rewarding <laughs> you know especially in because I have my partner and I mean, like, I'm, I'm really lucky with my partner and, and I'm lucky that like, you know, we have, we have a child that we have, you know, 
all the time. But I have my two other kids who I split time with, you know, half during the week and stuff. Um, but uh, it's pretty, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's pretty awesome to be home. <laughs> it's well, pretty, know, like, amazing. and like, I'm like saying hi to people. Now when I go out, like, I'm like, you know, when I'm, dri I'm driving around and whatever, doing my thing, or I go to the store, like I say hi to people. I make con eye contact with people. I'm like, I, you know, it's like, I'm like, cause I just don't have, it's like, I no longer have that excuse of like, oh, I'm really tired. I just got home from Australia. Oh, I'm really tired. I'm like, I'm really worried. I gotta go. I'm like, I'm bummed out. I gotta go back on tour in two weeks and I'm not gonna see my kids. You know, like yeah. I, I had all these, like I had all these built in excuses for, for not being present in my, in my day to day life. You know, I'm like, I'm tired. I don't want to look at anybody. I'm like, <laughs> I don't want to mow. I don't want to mow my lawn. I got to let you know, like, I don't want to do this shit. And then like, I, and I, and I shouldn't have to, because I, I'm going to be gone and I'm going to be doing this. And I mean, that's like, like, but now that I don't have any of that stuff, it's just like, get your fucking ass out and mow the lawn. Let's do yeah, it. Yeah. Your, your yeah. wife, likes, your, your wife likes it when the lawn is mowed. Go fucking mow the lawn. <laughs> And I bought a weed whacker this weekend. You know, I got a Home Depot credit card, got a weed whacker. I'm like, nice. Yeah. I'm like, well, I, I, well, I started fantasizing about weed whackers. I'm like, this is great. Well, it's also kind of funny because, like, you realize that you actually are getting pleasure from doing these things that maybe you had thought before all this was just this mundane, boring thing. And then it's like, no, man, I'm, I'm really looking forward to using this weed whacker and doing this. This is, I never realized that this was like actually the, going to be a rewarding experience that I'm really going, going to enjoy, but it took a pandemic for that to happen. It, it did. You know I mean? I, I was like, I couldn't, as far as like mowing my lawn, it's like, I, I had a, I had a fucking chip on my shoulder about mowing lawns since I was a teenager, you know? Yeah. And always getting out of it and always doing a shitty job and like, just like, you know, very contemptuously running my parents' lawnmower into like fence posts and like, you know, just feeling really like put out by put out by like domestic chore, you know, domestic stuff. And now it's like, sure. and now it's I'm book. like, it's I re I've, you know, it's it's just be it's just really it's it feels very rich. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I share I share my child with her mom and the rest of her family and stuff. So she's here half the time. Yeah. Uh, do you do you generally? Uh, well, you have your 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 youngest child with your wife. Um, right. So that's like an everyday thing. But as far as you working, do you work when your child is asleep or? Oh, well, we. You, my wife work? and I, I don't know what we. Like maybe two months ago, we sort of we broke our pot a little bit, like because we were pretty like Massachusetts is really like. I mean, even though there's plenty. I mean, I live in a rural town, so there's plenty of like fucking pickup trucks and you know, all that stuff. And there, I mean, it's not, it's not as like politically uh, correct as everyone would imagine it would be like in Massachusetts, it's pretty, but for the most part, people just are just smart about stuff. So they did really kind of address the whole thing really quickly and everybody did shut down for probably three months. Like yeah. really, it was pretty, it was a pretty tight shutdown. And it kind of, it kind of clinched a lot of, cause there was a real big threat from Boston. There was a huge, there was a big explosion of infections in Boston. I'm pretty sure I brought it home with me from Australia. I mean, I very well could have had it like in the very when I got home because I did run a fever, had a bunch of stuff and I did, you know, anyway, but it's because I mean, I was being, I was being chased by it through Asia. I mean, I was actually supposed to be flying in and out of, I was going to be flying in and out of China during like the very, luckily one of the, the shows I got, my, I had a show in Korea canceled, so I didn't go through China, but I was supposed to. Right. Anyway, and then and we we were like we had there was guys in hazmat there was people in hazmat suits in Australia while we were there we were in New Zealand they all shut we were just it was just chasing us everywhere we were flying every day we and we got home I mean and we were supposed to go to, we were supposed to be in Italy we were supposed to go to Europe like right before everything shut down so anyway the point being that like when I got home I knew it was serious and I was like okay well you know. So I did lock down, but eventually like my parents, the point of this is that my parents uh, who are at risk, you know, but they did, we, we decided that at some point it's like, look, we've been locked down for, you know, a couple of months. They've been locked down. Can you watch Izzy, you know, our four-year-old for like four hours today? 
you know, and they did. So we got like my wife and I got four hours alone for the first time in like months. <laughs> it was just like, and I can't even, I was just like, I mean, the mental gymnastic it took to get through that four months was like, I just, it was shocking. But anyway, yeah, it was, but we, but we realized it just made us realize the, 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 the value of hours and time and eventually, and this happened kind of recently where my wife and I just sat down and we said, look, when I wake up in the morning, like, you know, let's do this. When, when I wake up, when we wake up right after breakfast, I'll take Izzy, you know, my wife kind of, my wife is really intelligent. She's very, she's just, you know, she's a genius. So I was like, she's like, look, you take Izzy for four hours. During that four hours, I can do whatever I want. If I want to go into my work, my workstation and just fuck around and do nothing. If I want to clean the bathroom, if I want to sit on my ass and read a book, if I want to take a nap. That's what I do. You take Izzy and our four year old is very high maintenance. <laughs> she's so intense. And I mean, she's really fun, but she's like fucking. So I was like, yeah, great. And she's like, and then, you know, after lunch, you get to do whatever the fuck you want, whatever, yeah. you know, work and you go to your fucking you go to your office you do this um you know you do whatever the fuck you want for four hours and then we're, we'll meet back up uh you know at four o'clock in the afternoon and you know we'll do that and we we figured that out and we started doing it like every day when we just had izzy it gets more complicated when my kids my other two kids come around but they're a little bit older so it's a little easier as you yeah. can imagine so um but we did that and it was just like, holy fuck. Like it made a huge difference. I mean, it was like, I mean, it, to the, I mean, to this point, it's almost like we're ready. I mean, we had a, we had a neighbor across the street losing her mind the other day and she came over and she was just like, she was losing. I mean, you just heard her screaming across the street and she came over and she started talking to Adele and we were just like, look, you know, have you done, what do you, what is your schedule with your husband? What are you doing? How are you managing this? Cause they have like, they have a, they have a very young child and she's pregnant and, but anyway, just this, this way of segregating the time and saying, look, look, you, because before that, it's like, you just wake up not know, And when you don't know, like you want to be cool to your, your partner and let, and, and let them have time. But you're just also like, just like so frustrated <laughs> that you just want some time to yourself to like gather your thoughts or do something, you know, anything. Yeah. And, but, but, but you sort of, I mean, we spent months just waking up with this like dread, like how the hell are we going to make this day go by? How the hell are we ever, you know, how are we going to make it through this and not start taking it out on each other and not start fighting? And because it's like, anyway, so that, I guess the point is that, that that's what I do. So I have like, so when we have just, we have just the four-year-old, um, I take, I, we both get, three or four hours a day to do to work on our shit and then which is which is which is good because of you know i mean i can burn out sense. you know it's anyway it, it worked it's been working out and then then also the the little one had camp for a couple of hours like this this summer like for a couple of weeks because they this incredible I mean, this outdoor thing whatever so it kind of yes. worked it worked out because they got the, the infections here really low and, yeah so they did do that. I don't think they're going to open up the schools. I expect everything's going to be a lot, become as, as difficult or more difficult than it was soon. But I, I, I sure. don't know. Yeah. Were you impressed by, uh, I guess I'll have another pandemic statement. Were you impressed how, uh, how this situation involving uh, what was going on um, turned from this scientific issue and into this uh, political sort of, sort of thing like like how people made doing this wearing a mask uh equating something that was a political decision no i don't none, none of that stuff surprises me no none of it i mean it, it, it i mean i think it's it's none of i'm not not nothing nothing political <laughs> none of that stuff surprises me i just know i mean I, we i this has been coming for a long time. So I don't, I don't, I don't see that. None of that stuff is like, none of it makes, none of it like makes me particular. I mean, 
it just makes I, I I have to say the one thing is I I do feel one thing that's been hard for me I guess is like I feel a tremendous sadness. Yeah, I just feel very sad. I just I a lot when I think about stuff and people and how threatened people feel. I feel really sad for people who because there was people there's already like a, a sizable part of our population who have a, who have a difficult time with germs and shit like that anyway. Just yeah. going to door shaking hands like there's there's just a kid and then there's a lot of people who are just mentally ill and like i feel so bad for like people who are mentally ill i feel so bad for people who are just like angry i mean whatever they're angry about it's like a, i don't care whether either side of the political spectrum it's like i feel bad for all of them i'm mean, just like i feel bad for their angst because they've been because they've been carrying this around anyway and this is just is this is just this is just torture for people. This is just tweaking them all in such a terrible way. Like everyone is just getting, they're having all of their sensitivities tweaked. And I mean, and that's everybody. That's like, that's whether they're, they're like, you know, a biker going to like fucking, uh, what's the big biker rally that they just happened. You know, it's whether it's those guys, I mean, they're, they're South Dakota. Yeah, it's like the what, Sturgis. It's like it's like all those people. Like even those people that they're all they're all super oversensitive and like uh, and and they're weak and they're they're like their weaknesses are being exposed. And then all the people who, you know, like, <laughs> it's like the, the first the, the the first week of the pandemic. You know, I'm at Whole Foods and in, in Mass. You know, in Amherst, Massachusetts, which is like you know just full of like you know uh, academics and stuff. And these people are just like. They've got like three face masks on and like a, you know, and then they're people losing their shit because other people go to beaches and you're like, Jesus Christ, man, let's, this is, you, you can go to a fucking beach. <laughs> I mean, you know, don't go to like, you know, maybe don't hang out with people, but you can go to a goddamn beach. It's not, it's like, anyway, I mean, it's just, it's just, I feel, I feel so bad for everybody. So none of it is surprising. None of it is, yeah. Is like none of it's shocking. It's all just yeah. kind of bad. I just feel. I mean, I I had a really hard time with that about a month ago. I was just. I got so sad. I could. I had a kind of a hard time functioning for a while because I just yeah. felt so sad, and it was getting in the way of my you know creativity and getting in the way of my of just focusing to a large degree. But oh yeah. But yeah. I work. I work. You know, you just you just have to work through the shit. You know, so I've, I've I've definitely like I don't know. Just like in my, I'm kind of lucky that I live in a small community. You know, yeah. Kind of lucky that I do that. I'm lucky that I live near like a woods and things like that because I've actually gone hiking. I've never done that, you know. But but I'd be like I'd be out like hiking, you know, with my kids, and then you, you there'd be somebody hiking with a mask on. You're like. Oh, you poor fucking bastard! What are you, why are you hiking with a mask God? I can't get away from you. The thing is, it's like there's like it's like you know I tuned into the what what caused the virus and all that stuff pretty early on, just because we were traveling and uh, yeah, and our drummer, you know Bob from uh, Sebado, like he was re he's really tweaked and tuned on, on in on everything. He just generally always is and. Uh, you know, it was like, you know, I, I, within a few weeks of it started, you got a pretty good idea of how it was transmitted, what was going on, like what you're what you're going to get it from, what you're not going to get it from, and uh, you know, those things guide me. And I know, I mean, but when I see, it's like you see somebody hiking in a fucking middle of a woods with a mask on, you're like, oh no, oh no. <laughs> Oh no, 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 no. Like it's cause I mean it's a very uncomfortable experience. <laughs> it's like, like Yeah, it's, it's, not really, it's not really a lot of fun. So, but it's <laughs> like, oh well, if, if that's what it takes, you know, I'll I'll do it. You know, I mean, I absolutely care. the minute that I'm anywhere near people or I'm like anywhere that that because I you do it, I mean it's like to a large degree, you've gotta you've gotta do what you've gotta you gotta you gotta I mean, the way that I look at it is like some, I mean, just knowing how tweaked people are, it's like, God, you gotta like, you gotta respect those poor people. <laughs> you gotta be like, but hiking in the woods with a mask on, 
I'm like, I'm sorry, I just, that just, I feel so, that just is another thing that makes me feel bad. I'm like, oh no. So instead of getting angry, you just get sad. I get really, I'm really sad. I'm not, I'm not angry at all. Like I want to like fucking, I want to like put a, I mean, I want to put a, I mean, I drive my dad's pickup truck around and um, I want to put a fucking flag on that pickup truck. I want to like, I want, <laughs> you know, I want to bring, I want to bring, I want to just, I want to create the most like, I mean, I want, I feel bad for everybody. I just, I, I, and I mean, the, this, the dumbassery that's been going on in this country has been stewing. It's been half, it's, it's been coming on for 30 fucking years. It's been coming on for a really long time. This is not a surprise, you know? No. And there, it was not ushered in by the, you know, the, 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 the current uh, administration, you know, this, this stuff is like, this is like it's old been news. Burning. Uh, it's old news it's it's like yeah. this is not a so and i i don't know man i'm thankful that i have stuff to really care about <laughs> <laughs> you know what i mean I, I just, i'm yeah. just thankful that i have that, that i literally like the well-being of of four to five, four or five people really depends on me so i like i concentrate on them and they're like, they like you that. Know, me, and me being as present as possible with my children it's like you know, that's important. And so, oh, yeah. and, and I just, I think that's been a really cool part of this too, is like, yeah, I mean, I, you do have, it's, it's, it's like you said, when it, and you shut off a computer, it disappears and you can't just, you can't, I mean, when, when you have these relationships and people to take care of, and then also like your art and your music, and it's like, it's like, you know, you got shit, to, you got, you got stuff to do. <laughs> yeah, you gotta be, and you also gotta be grateful with what you got. You know, it's like yeah, you know, I mean, I'm really like I'm grateful. I'm grateful for you know my partner. I'm grateful for her daughter. I'm grateful for my daughter. I'm grateful that I get to be like, you know, uh, a dad to two little girls that I care. You know, I'm I'm just grateful to be in that position. I'm grateful to be able to draw still. Um, yeah. Mike Dean from COC asked me to play with him on some studio yes. project. I'm grateful to be doing that. I haven't played in a long time. So I'm just trying to be grateful and be present. Totally. That's exactly, that's, that's, that's totally where I'm at right now. I'm just, I, 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 uh, I, I, <laughs> um, yeah. but I mean, I think like writing, songs i guess to me just because i'm older like it's changed so much i mean i think the way that i write songs has become like like i finished a song that i li i started writing i started writing this song like like no joke probably let's see uh i guess it's 2006 2006 probably 24 years ago <laughs> i started writing a song you know and i've yeah. And I like I, I like I have these I have I have I basic I have, have melodies that come up. That's yeah. what happens. I'll write a melody, and then, and I, at some point when I was like, I decided that the melodies carry themselves. If the only way that I'll carry melodies, I don't carry them by recording them. It's like if I, either I remember them, if I if I remember them, they're good. If I don't remember them, then then I don't. So yeah. So it, so basically, my my brain now as an as an aging you know songwriter musician guy is that is that I just have I have these like I have this like sort of stockpile of melodies that come to me and that I develop incrementally over extremely long periods of time. Right. And and if I feel and if I have a project that I'm working on, like I have this really cool thing that I'm doing now, like a subscriber series where people subscribe and then like every month they get like a cassette. I don't know why the fuck anyone would want a cassette, but they do. <laughs> so I may, I'll make like cassettes, but which will also be, you know, a cassette is actually, you know, 12 digital tracks. So I go through. So every every month I'm putting out like these things and it could be like like for the other like for, for last month, it was it was nine songs from a, a tour that I did in 2009 with the missing men, you know, that play with Mike Watt. They played with me for a couple of like a year or so. Yeah. And I just went through a bunch of live stuff and mixed all this live stuff and made a cassette of that, you know, and, and, uh, and so I do that, but these pe people like subscribe to it. So every quarter, every three months they pay 60 bucks and then they get like, 
so anyway, I have this ongoing concern of, I have this ongoing project of like think where I'm going back in and like finding old stuff and re and sort of packaging it, you know, yeah. and, or, and then also every quarter I come up, I write two or three new songs or, you know, four, I at most like three or four new songs I'll write. But those new songs could be, like I said, like, you know, last week I finished a song that I started 24 years ago <laughs> because I was just like, I want to finish this, you know, and then, all of a sudden I felt it. I felt like for some reason I had this burst of clarity about what the song was about. And I was, and I, and I finished it and I sat down and I recorded it. So um, I have this subscriber thing that I've been doing and it's going to last until December has just been, it's become like this incredible, uh, this kind of really cool, it's so self-involved. I mean, I just consider it, it's like, it feels like it's for me, you know, really ultimately like this is just yes. for me. But I, but you know, like two, there's like 250 odd people who, who subscribe to it. And I do it through Joyful Noise Records and they give me, you know, and they, they give me most of the profits that come from that. So it's, it's not like, it's not life changing, but it's, it's certainly like, but it's certainly at this point, it's like, you know, it pays, I mean, it pays for groceries for a month, <laughs> you know, and yeah. And uh, it so I have that, and uh, you know, so I, yeah, I've been, I've, I've had a really cool, I've had a, I've had a really cool year of just going back through, just, just, just going back through my whole musical history and putting my putting things together, and and then you know, and then just. I mean, I just love writing songs. I love it. I, I love writing so much. I, I love the feeling of accomplishment. And I'm, and like all of this stuff too, you, you just drop all of, I have, I've been dropping it anyway, but just slowly getting older. It's just, you drop all of these like insecurities that you have, like, you know, like, oh, I'm not as good as this or that, or, or why am I not as good? <laughs> well, why didn't, why do people, why don't as many people care about this as care about that? And it's like, all that shit just doesn't matter anymore, which is amazing. And it's like, you know, if I got 250 people, they're going to like pay $60 a quarter, you know, whatever, 20 a month to $20 a month to me. So I can just cough up some shit for them. It's like, that's know, awesome. Yeah. It's kind of yeah. awesome. My attitude is like, nobody, nobody has to pay attention to anything you do regardless of anything so it's like the fact that they do is is a really yeah. great thing you know so it really is it's really and, and, but you know and, and those people are you know again i thought i was a goner and it turned out to be the opposite people seem to want artwork more that's amazing I don't, I, I don't know why and you know so you know i can't do anything else i don't really want to do anything else you know it's like I, you know this is this is this is it. <laughs> this is it, you know, and until I drop dead. You know, this, yep. this is, ironically, that happened. Who would have known? <laughs> Barlow, he was the last person. Um, but, um, yeah. Well, I'm going to let you go pretty soon. All right. Uh, I just want to say thanks for doing this. This is a very thoughtful conversation, actually. So yeah. thank you very much. It was, it was nice. Well, it's always good to talk to you, man. Yeah, likewise. Yeah. Your interview came out good. The book's coming out October 10th. I'm going to talk to my publisher, and uh, every I got everybody's addresses, and everybody's going to get one. Oh, cool. If that could be, I'm, I'm pretty sure it'll be sooner than October 10th. You know. Cool. But, uh, it came out good. You know, I, awesome. I think, you know, you had a great line in there about how you wanted to have a house where you could find a corner to go into and scream every once in a while and that line just really just totally stood out i mean it was a few years ago when we talked but it was right after you had moved back but that line in particular really stood out for some reason it was good so my question my final question to you involves boston hardcore oh cool okay <laughs> throwing the monkey right here. oh that's good so and i know you've been waiting to hear this so um yeah well, I recently have befriended Al from yeah. SSD Control. Yeah. He's a really nice guy. I like Al a lot. He's a real straight shooting, no bullshit kind of guy. Yeah, I like I like how he's joined some of your conversations. I think that's great. It's really, I mean, for me, it's a total treat. I love it. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's, yeah, he's like, 
he's very what you see is what you get kind of guy. Oh, so yeah. my question, since you were involved in the Western Massachusetts Maximum Rock and Roll Scene Report world, is when you guys went to Boston, who was the band that you, I'll just say you, because I'm not going to ask you to speak for anybody else, but who did you hold in the highest regard from the Boston hardcore, non-Mission of Burma non-proletariat side of things who 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 did it for you every time uh well they were all really tremendous live i thought you know i mean they were just they were all kind of like i mean i think the band that made me the craziest when i saw them was gangrene they were like they were so fucking over the top like they were so like in that initial three piece that they were the boston not only like yes, that, like that era, that like era, you know, like, like that fucking, they were like, I can't remember, I think it might have been like the, the process of eliminate that show when, that the tour when like, you know, Necros and Negative Approach came to town and, um, but Gangrene, I was like, holy fuck, they were so, I mean, like, because I think the thing is, it's like, they were also so, uh, they were young. They were young and they were, they were, but they were, I mean, they were the same exact age as, as we were, as like Deep Blue were, but they were so irreverent. I mean, it was like, there was just, there was this incredible irreverence behind them, but they were also like music, like they were so musically, I mean, I thought incredibly sophisticated because they were like, they, the drumming was like just completely over the top. That guy, Chris Doherty, that guitar player, he's the craziest rhythm guitar player that I've ever seen. And I swear to God, even to this day, it's like, to me, like strumming and hardcore, it's, it's fairly standard, but there are certain people that like were, because he then went on, he actually played on the Jerry's Kids record. I love the Jerry's Kids album. It's amazing. Like, the, is this my world or whatever? Yep. And you, I fucking got that record. I hadn't listened to it in ages. And I got it the other, like a couple of months ago. And I'm like, I'm like, why does this sound so fucking good? And I'm like, oh my God, it's because fucking Chris Doherty plays on it. And I mean, I just... And you know, they, 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 they quickly, they were so fucking, uh, to me, they, they were so smart and so irreverent. And, and I just thought musically, like, I just found that really super fast hardcore. I, I found it really musically sophisticated. I mean, even though it wasn't really, I mean, it was like very simple, but I just thought it was like, it was so conceptual. And so it just like, it was just like modern art. It was like complete deconstruction of, of rock, you know, which I found really, but I, yeah. but but then, you know, all of those bands were amazing. Jerry's Kids were incredible live. The FUs were really funny. They were actually very nice. Like, they oh, were like, they were, and they were really good. Like, the FUs were really good, and they were really funny. And they, and they were actually the guys that were like, because that whole, like, the uh, SSD, DYS, those guys were, like, kind of scary. <laughs> they were, they were kind of scary. They were the guys that, like, they, like, they, those guys... And in a good, and I say this in a good way, because I don't want, I mean, you know, because it's like I, when I tried to, I tried to slam at one show, I tried to slam at a dead Kennedy show. Right. And of course, like, as you can imagine, I mean, it was fucking packed and like all of the crew was there. The Boston and, crew? Yeah. And they like, they were so violent. Like they were, it was so violent that like, I I went into the pit, lost my glasses, picked my glasses up, and I never slammed again. I was like, at any of those shows that you went to, like even the small shows, like it would be like those guys, DYS, SSD, uh, choke, you know, choke, you know, pre slap shot, last rights kind of shit. Um, those Have guys, you? were so fucking, they were like brutal, like, br and it was like the. And then, I mean, the thing is, like, they, they didn't have quite the, I mean, for me, they didn't have that, that zing that, like, gangrene had, but live, they were, like, absolutely, like, epic, like, epically, like, just, like, dun, 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 like, just, you know, just like that, dun, 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 and the drummer was, like, super fucking, like, tribal, and, and the yeah. way that, the way that Al played, I mean, he was just, like, he was, like, this, 
he had like that Joey Ramon, or excuse me, the Johnny Ramon kind of just like, you know, you're like, this isn't about fun, motherfucker. <laughs> you're like, you're like, my God, it was, it was just like breathtakingly intense. I mean, I just, I just, I'll never forget. I mean, it's funny because the town that I live in now, Greenfield, was where all of the early, the very early Western Mass hardcore shows were. Yeah. And my kids actually, when they were in, they were in school, they were in a school here where, that had the talent shows at the hall that I played it. Like, so my, I saw my I saw my little my little girl sang on this stage like, you know, when she was in uh, like you know sixth and seventh grade. It was the same stage, the deep wound when I played my very first shows, and I saw I fucking saw SSD and Flipper and the Big Boys and all. It's it's really funny. It's pretty. Yeah, it's, it's kind of mind blowing. Kind of neat, you know, kind of a neat uh, thing. But but I don't know. All the I thought all of those fucking Boston bands were good. I liked every single one of them. I mean, I you know I was I. It was all just so. You know that that was my show experience. I didn't go to I didn't go to rock and roll shows when I was a kid. You know I didn't go I didn't go see, you know whatever. I didn't go. I didn't like I didn't like rock and roll. I didn't like I didn't like rock and roll. I just didn't. You know, so I didn't I didn't go to shows. I I liked I liked hardcore because it was the. I just liked hardcore. I loved, so I I never I never I never gave a shit about hard rock until I was. Until I was like, much older. Yeah, actually, I mean, until I was, I didn't. I mean, I didn't start listening to classic rock until I was 20, you know? Yeah. For me, I I kind of grew up with that. So I was, uh, that was my background before hearing punk rock or hardcore. But my attitude seemed to be, well, great, more music that's good that I like. But yeah. there's no denying it was also more, you know, a very personal sort of thing. And you could actually see these people or whatever. But I didn't. You know, I never uh, sold all my other records or pretend that music you know, didn't exist before. Before you know I heard the black flag. You know, like getting to know like John Brandon from Negative Approach and you know Ian McKay a little bit, and then like and Henry Rollins. You know, just because I traveled with him and heard him talking every day for like a month. You know, um, all and Mike Watt, like Mike Watt, all those guys, huge classic rock fans, all of them huge huge classic rock fans they all grew up like mike watt and fucking d boone slept on the ground before the california jam festival you know i think that one that was like 1976 or something i mean like one of the one you know the one yeah i just they he, he and boone like took the public bus out to fucking ontario's raceway i guess that's where it was and then yeah. He's like, yeah, we slept on the ground. <laughs> that, <laughs> on the like ground. Something, that sounds like something I would have loved to have done if I wasn't so, so wouldn't have been so scared. Like, yeah, oh, now yeah. we're going to do this. We're going to sleep on the ground so we can see Deep Purple and Black Sabbath. Duh, and John Brandon's got all the same stories. He's like, oh, man, Alice Cooper, man. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, that's his thing. Like, I mean, it's like, on all those, I'm like, and and I guess for me, what's so incredible about it is that like, they went from they went from, and they still, I mean, they still all of them too. All of them are like, you know, what I mean, like Ted Nugent is he's actually the godfather of straight edge because fucking Ian McCoy said that. I've totally said that. Ted Nugent. He was totally into Ted Nugent, so that's why. <laughs> 